it, everybody. Join all these folks right here and welcome to another day of USWA Championship Wrestling. I'm Dave Brown. We're set to go with another big one today, the fabulous one. Stan and Steve will be here with their manager, Jimmy Cornett, and his tennis racket, I'm afraid. And also, the new kids will be here to go against them. The makings of a most interesting match, and that'll be our opener here on Championship Wrestling today. The team of the U.S. Males, we'll say more about those a little bit later on. Brian Lee, Dirty White Boy, Doug Gilbert, they're all here too. And Danny Davis will be along with Jerry Lynn as his partner to go against Tom Pritchard and Terry Garvin. Should be an interesting expiration of time main event right there. We'll be back here in just a moment with the opening match of the day. The fabulous ones going against the new kids. Stay with us. New kids heading for the ring, greeting the fans along the way. Well, I tell you what, these guys right here have a great opportunity today. They come into this match definitely as underdogs because of, uh, uh, you hear the other music. Here come the fabulous ones. I'm sure they'll be led by Jimmy Cornett as they make their way into the wrestling area right here. Well, I beg your pardon. They're led by USWA ring girls and Jimmy Cornett. Well, I tell you what, Cornett has some of the weirdest outfits I've ever seen. That tennis racket cover, or whatever is inside there, supposedly a tennis racket. Stan and Steve, the fabulous ones, climbing through the ropes into the ring right now. And this match, boy, I am looking forward to it. You've got Stan and Steve, who of course have uh, wrestled all over the world and won all over the world. You've got Jimmy Cornette, probably the most devious manager in wrestling. Devious? Yeah. Devious. I thought that was a good word. I'll tell you what, first of all, I want to lodge a formal protest. These ring girls tried to assault the fabulous ones on the way to the ring, man. They're so starved for men around here. Uh, I, Jimmy, I tell you, we're, we're going to get a chair for you, and if you would, just kind of sit right there. As soon as the referee gives a signal, we will, in fact, ring the bell. Here we go. We are underway. We're anxious to beat somebody up this morning, David. Such a nice day. I can hardly wait to see the Fabs take these two kids apart. Did you see them come out slapping hands? You know what they were doing? They were trying to pick people's pockets, take people's wristwatches off because they're such stinking wrestlers. They can't make a dime. They got to resort to pickpocketry and thievery. There's one thing I hate. It's a dishonest person, Dave Brady. You realize that? I hear what you're saying, and uh, yeah, I'm not too thrilled with dishonest people myself. And, and keep in mind that it's Jimmy Cornette that's sitting beside me right here. I'll just let that speak for itself. The new kid, Brian and Tony. Look at Tony. Great drop kick on Stan Lane. You know what you call that, Dave? I'll tell you exactly what you call that. Lulling your opponent into a false sense of security. That's what you call that. Stan Lane deliberately stood there and took that drop kick just to make the little punk think he was doing something. Well, whether he was doing it deliberately or not, Stan Lane was checking for all of his teeth when he uh, picked himself back up off the mat. He's got all his teeth, Dave, but I know you got all your teeth, too. As a matter of fact, I saw him sitting in a jar back in the bathroom a little bit earlier. You got every single one of them in there. Look at Tony reverse. Stan Lane, keep in mind that the fabulous ones have a size advantage on both the new kids. All right, Cornette a little bit upset. Looks like he wants to maybe call a conference of it. No, he doesn't want to call a conference. He wants to complain to the referee. There he is, Jimmy Cornett, the manager of the fabulous one. You know, Dave, that's, that's, just a, that's just an example of the kind of officiating you get around here in the USWA. The guy blatantly ignores every kind of rule and practice on the part of the new kid. But at the same time, if the Fabs do something, well, my gosh, we're just terrible. Now, I... Well, I tell you how I see that, Jimmy. I haven't seen any violations by the new kids yet. Well, you, well, have you got your glasses on, Dave? You know you're getting old. Look at that. Gray hair. Last Russell carriage on his back for 25 years. Now you're trying to do this by yourself. You can't even see. Jimmy Cornett. There's a tag made, and here comes Brian. Oh, Tony fired into the rope. Whoa. Look at the backdrop. Brian around behind. Steve Perry, the shoulders down. One, two. He got a two count. Gets the count of three. Jimmy Cornett is screaming. He's complaining about everything he can think of. Yeah, he pulled his hair. He choked him. He poked him in the eyes. He pulled his tights. Anything that he can get allowed there. But, uh, of course, none of that happened. That was just Cornett's excuse. Because Steve Kern found himself on the mat. And within a fraction 
of a count of being pinned and defeated. Those kids are not good enough wrestlers to do that without having broken every rule in the book, Dave Brown. What's the matter with you? Can't you see that? They couldn't possibly do that unless they were cheating. Well, I think you're wrong, Jimmy. I think maybe you have underestimated your opponents this particular day. But I'll tell you what, the new kids, they ain't going to have a chance to get old, brother. I'm going to go pump the fabs up. Well, go ahead and talk to the fabs. Oh, Steve Kern, nice reversal. Tell you what, you got to give it to the fabulous ones. They are a tremendous tag team together. But the new kids are just that, new kids. They're learning, but they're good. Boy, a victory here against the fabulous ones today. Oh, double, double up. Stan Lane from behind kicked Brian in the back as he was into the ropes over here. Now Steve Kerr picks him up. Ooh, my goodness, drops him right down in the, on the small of his back. Brian gets up, holding his back. Stan Lane in, figures he's got him hurt now. Cornette said, yeah, let's go. Oh, look at this. Brian puts his shoulders down once again. The new kids very close to having the three count and an upset victory over the fabulous ones. Up in the air. There's a slam on Tony by Stan Lane. Yeah, now Stan Lane's feeling good. We got a body slam. We powered him down to the mat. Here's Cornette back. Now that we got that taken care of, let me tell you, the new kids are never going to get the opportunity to celebrate their 15th birthday because the fabulous ones are now at work doing what they do best. Suplexing, body slamming, power slamming, pile driving, everything it takes to defeat somebody. That's what the fabulous ones are good at, Dave Brown. And we are going to mess all over these kids. Well, the fabulous ones are good at doing what it takes to win, but the new kids have had a couple of surprises already for the fabulous ones. There's a cover. One, two. Oh, he kicked out of it. It's a two count. Thought he had him there. The new kids may have more surprises. The only surprise that the new kids could possibly surprise me with is if they get out of the hospital before their 24th birthday. That's what would surprise me after the fabulous ones get finished with them, brother. They're going to eat their lunch. Look at this. Shoulders are down. Oh, my goodness. They double team. Steve Kern just walked right in there and stepped on it. It wasn't double team. It was teamwork. And that's exactly what you do. You step on somebody. You want to win wrestling matches? You step on somebody. You want to collect bounties? You step on somebody. And we like to step on people, brother. Kern slamming Tony's head into the uh, metal chair down here on the floor. Now he picks him up and throws him in the ring. Stan Lane in there waiting for him. All right. Fine, fine sportsmanship. I suppose you taught him that, Cornette. Let me tell you something. I didn't have to teach them nothing because they were already the greatest tag team around. Sportsmanship is for losers, Dave Brown. Sportsmanship is for all these people sitting out in the audience that they don't like their job. They got a big fat beer belly, their wife nags them. They like to be sportsmen, because if they get upset with somebody, that somebody is going to shove a fist down their throat. The fabulous ones are tough enough. We do what we say we're going to do. We say what we want to say, and we think like we want to think, because we can do it, because we can go anywhere we want, and nobody bothers us, brother. I think you've just admitted that you pay no attention to the rules, if I hear you right. Jimmy Cornette. In the ring, Steve Kern. Gator picks up. Tony of the new kids whips him across the way into the turnbuckle. But Tony moved out of the way. He's headed for the corner. Can he get there in the tag? Brian reaches for the tag. There's Tony. He got the tag. And here comes Brian in. He's been watching all of this. He's having to take on both the fabulous ones. A drop kick for Lane. There's one for Kern. Ryan goes to work on Stan Lane back in the corner. Turns to Steve Kern was coming up behind him. Kern fired into the rope. Oh, look out. Grabs it by the neck. Drives him down to the mat. Look out. Ryan thrown into the ropes. Now through the ropes, down onto the floor. Tony had to try to help out. He goes to work on Kern. Lane from behind. Comes around and ends up putting a boot in the midsection here. And now both of the fabs, Stan and Steve, are in there working. Oh, look out. Look out, Turn Puts a pile driver on Tony. And a referee saw what happened and called for the bell. That's over. It's an illegal pile driver. Look at this. Turn knocks down the referee. Stan Lane has Tony up in the air. Look out. Here comes the king. And that will be enough of 
There's Cornet, Steve Kern, and Stan Lane raising their hands, declaring themselves the winner, but that's not the way it is. They lose it. They lose it on a technical loss, and then they end up nailing the referee. There's going to be a fine for them there. Jerry Lawler in to help out with Tony, who had been had hit with a pile driver one time, and they were ready to do it again. Now Brian and Tony rolling out of the ring. Lawler is there to help with them. Let's take a break. We'll be back with more action in a moment. Well, I think we just saw a situation here just a moment ago where the fabulous ones were surprised by some of the moves that the new kids were able to come up with. And they ended up going for the cheap shot. They went for the pile driver to wrap it up. Here comes the king. It may take him a minute to get here as he's greeted by the fans on the way over. He, of course, was able to help out. King, first, thanks for your help in, uh, in getting the new kids uh, out and uh, uninjured uh, even more than they were with that pile driver on there. Yeah, um, you know, any anytime you mess with the fabulous ones, that's what that's the kind of stuff you can expect. Especially, you know, I remember just a few weeks ago right here, you just can't turn your back on anybody that's connected with Jimmy Cornette. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about about the fabulous ones, Jimmy Cornette, that sort of stuff. But first, before well, I know we got some footage we want yeah. to show. I want to mention two things, and we got some people sitting over here that we're going to get to in just a minute, too, and uh, have them out here. But uh, I want to mention a, a little appearance that I'm going to be making this afternoon, uh, and I'll talk more about it in just a few minutes, but it's going to be, yeah, at the zoo. Thanks a lot. This is this guy. <laughs> hey, save your breath. You'll need it to blow up your inflatable date later on today. <laughs> uh, what I wanted to say was, we're, we're going to be out at the uh, we're going to be out at Sports Unlimited, which is at 6777 Winchester, and uh, we're going to have out there uh, a lot of free pictures for everybody, and uh, we're going to have some free wrestling tickets that are going to be good for this Monday night's matches. So come on out, and it's going to be from two to four this afternoon. We'll talk about it a little bit more after a while, okay. but I just and we got some people from Sports Unlimited too. Before I talk about the match that's going to be coming up this week, I, yeah, there, look, it's on the screen right now. Before I talk about the match that's going to be coming up this week, I wanted to talk about the match that took place last week. And you I understand we, we're going to show some footage. We've got some footage of that. You and Jeff going against Stan and Steve and Cornette. And, and, and uh, pay particular interest to the, the end of the match. Frank Morell was refereeing. And Jamie Dundee had refereed some matches earlier mm -hmm. in the evening. And this was the weirdest situation I've ever been involved in because, uh, you know, Bill Dundee was out of action due to the fabulous ones. But uh, Jamie Dundee comes in at the end of this match and comes in with the craziest decision that you've ever seen. Let's just take a look at the highlights. Take a look at it. Come on, come on, come on. And now behind the ref's back, Waller too late to prevent Stan Lane from pile driving Jarrett. And again, it looks like they're setting him up. Powell drives him a second time as Jim Cornette was on the ring apron. Stan Lane yelled about his knee, saying his knee gave out. Jared makes the tag. Lawler in, but Morrell did not see it. Oh, no. Here comes a third pile driver. Dr. Lett could be it right there. Stan Lane going to work on him, but Jared coming back with a couple of rights of his own. Firing away on Stan Lane. Giving it all he's got. Falling back into the corner. Corn grabbing the tights. Jarrett down in between Lane's legs. In comes Lawler. And the strap immediately comes down. And Lawler is nailing him left and right with the fist. Jim Cornette on the apron and Lawler nails him. Jarrett back to his feet. They have him in the opposite corners. Wailing away on him. Lane quivering in the center of the ring. 
defeated all right, in previous matches. Just come in and he said Lawler put a pile driver on him. Jamie Dundee running out here, handing the U.S. WWE World Tag Team title belts back to the fabulous ones. After watching from the back and saw Lawler pile drive Stan Lane as Frank Morrell was knocked out cold by Kurt on the mat. Lawler had Lane pinned for a count of three, but Jamie Dundee comes in and tells Frank Morrell, I saw it from the back. Jerry Lawler pile drives. Well, I think we could easily see exactly what happened. Jamie uh, had selective vision there. He missed the first three pile drivers, which the fabulous ones put on uh, Jeff. Yeah, actually, I, I think in the match there were about five of them. Uh, that the fabulous ones, as you said, used on Jeff Jarrett. Jamie Dundee later on says that he didn't see those, that he just came around and began watching the match when I piledrived uh, Stan Lane, and he, he felt that it was his obligation and his duty to come out there and uh, reverse that decision. But actually, what, in the argument that uh, ensued there, we did at least get Frank Morrell to, uh, you know, he asked the, the, the crowd there, everybody was telling him what took place, so uh, the one good thing that came out of it, instead of the fabulous ones being declared the winners of the match and retaining the world tag team titles, at least uh, Frank decided to, the belts have been held up. They are not the world tag team champions any longer. Jeff and I aren't either, but at least, at least Jimmy Cornette is no longer managing the world tag team champions. That brings us now to this week's match. There has been a return match ordered, but there are gonna be a little bit of different stipulations this week. Uh, of course, Cornette is always in the corner of the fabulous ones. Cornette is always a constant thorn in your side. He's somebody that you always have to worry about, wonder where he is during the match. Well, this week, Bill Dundee is going to be back, and he is going to be in our corner to offset any actions by Jimmy Cornette. So that should even the sides out. It'll be Steve Kern, Stan Lane with Jimmy Cornette, and it'll be against Jerry Lawler, Jeff Jarrett with Bill Dundee. Now, as I said, that should make it the sides even, that should make it good enough where we feel like we could come out of there with the World Tag Team titles. But there has also been another little extra stipulation added to this match that I'm very, very excited about. Because you see, Steve Kern and Stan Lane have been running around this area now, running all around Memphis, Tennessee, following the orders of Jimmy Cornette. They've been listening to everything that Jimmy Cornette has been telling them to do because in the back of their mind, they think that they're going to put me out and they think that they're going to put Jeff Jarrett out. They already got rid of Eddie Gilbert and they think they're going to collect all this money from Terry Funk. That's what Jimmy Cornette has in mind for these guys and they've been listening to him. Just like they used to listen to another guy, but they forgot everything that this other guy taught them. Well, let me tell you something, guys. This other guy has heard about what you've been doing and he's not real happy about it. And he's going to be here Monday night to be the special referee in this match. And I'm talking about, I'm talking about the real fabulous one. Jackie Fargo is going to be right here and he's going to be the special referee Monday night. So what I want you to do, Steve Kern and Stan Lane, is I want you to get somewhere and try to look in a mirror and I want you to look at yourself and I want you to try to think about what you've become because now it's time to pay the fiddler, boys. When we talk about the history of you and Jackie Fargo, we're talking about a man who was probably the best known and the greatest wrestler who ever stepped foot in a ring in not only Memphis, Tennessee, but anywhere in the country. And everybody knows what Jackie Fargo always stood for. Jackie Fargo always stood for pride, honor, and he did what was right. Sure, he would break the rules occasionally, but only if he had to, only if he was forced to. Jackie Fargo always stood up for what was right, and that's what he tried to instill in you guys. That's the reason that he put Steve Kern and Stan Lane together. And what Jackie did was he gave you guys the name The Fabulous One. You didn't earn it. Jackie Fargo earned that name over years of going around the country with his own blood, sweat, and tears. Jackie Fargo earned the name The Fabulous One, and he gave it to you guys. And now you guys are the one that have drugged the name The Fabulous One through the mud. You guys are the one that have tarnished the name The Fabulous One. You, Steve Kern, and you, Stan Lane, and most of all, you, Jimmy Cornette. 
And now, Monday night, like I said, it's time to pay, boys, because Jackie Fargo, the real fabulous one, is going to be back here. And then you guys got to look him in the eyes, and you guys got to try to explain to him your actions over the last few weeks. And I'm going to tell you this. It's going to be bad enough to be in your shoes when you have to face me and Jeff Jarrett and Bill Dundee in the ring, but I would really hate to be in your shoes when I have to look Jackie Fargo in the eyes, the man that, as I said, put you guys together and gave you the name The Fabulous One and try to explain to him what you've done to that name. All I gotta say, boys, is we're gonna throw all that past history out the window as far as Jeff and I are concerned. We're gonna be there Monday night for one reason, and that's to win the World Tag Team titles and take them away from two guys that in the past I would have said should deserve them. But Steve Kern and Stan Lane, you guys, now that you're with Jimmy Cornette, are nothing to be proud of. You're nothing to be called champions. And as far as Jeff and I are concerned, we're going to take those titles away from you, and then you can deal with Jackie Fargo any way you see best. So be there Monday night, boys, because Jeff Jarrett, Bill Dundee, and Jerry the King Lawler are going to be there, and also the fabulous Jackie Fargo is going to be there, and I just want to see how they try to squirm out of this one. What a night. Take a look at the legend himself, the original fabulous one, Jackie Fargo. Profile on the fabulous one, Jackie Fargo. Jackie Fargo is a legendary figure in professional wrestling. With the brothers Donnie and Roughhouse, Jackie formed the fabulous Fargos, the roughest wrestlers in the sport. From the 50s into the 60s, then into the 70s, the Fargos were world tag team champions many times. To uphold their reputation, the fabulous one, Jackie Fargo, fought many a top name in the professional wrestling field. Hard-fought battles. He held singles titles, as well as tag championships with other partners, and created the reputation of a true all-time champion and wrestling legend. In 1982, Jackie Fargo found two wrestlers he felt could carry the Fargo tradition. He taught them to fight to win, to break the rules if they had to, but to always give their best, just as the Fargos had always done. Introduced through wrestling's first rock music videos, the fabulous ones, Stan Lane and Steve Kern, battle teams such as the Moon Dogs, the Assassins, the Sheep Herders, and the Road Warriors, thus becoming tag team champions here and around the world for the decade of most of the 80s. After three years apart, Steve and Stan are back together again, but this time under the direction of gentleman Jim Cornette. Now the Fabs have turned their back on their heritage and reputation by trying to collect the bounty on the heads of Jerry the King Lawler and Jeff Jarrett. I don't care who they get in the ring with, or where, what city, if they ever do not take my advice, then I'll back away from them. But I think I've got the team that wants to be the fabulous ones again. That's all I got to say, Pally. Now the fabulous one himself, Jackie Fargo, has returned, not only to referee a match to ensure justice, but to restore the tarnished image that he fought so hard to possess. Often imitated and never duplicated. The fabulous one, Jackie Fargo. He is the legend, absolutely no doubt about it, and he'll be here to referee that match. All right, now here comes Jimmy Cornette with Stan Lane and Steve Kern. Uh, well, go ahead, make fun. Make fun, Jimmy Cornette. Do you think, did you, let me ask you a question. Did that bring a tear to a glass eye or what, huh? Was that just the most touching thing you've ever seen? <laughs> I'm so touched. I'm so broke up. Let me just say something, Jerry Lawler. First of all, Lawler, you better save your breath. You ain't going to need to blow up no dates. You're going to be needing to call for the doctor, for the nurse, for the anesthesiologist, for somebody to empty out your bedpan pump, because we're going to put you in a hospital. Now, I'll tell you something about Jerry Lawler. He comes out here and he talks tough about what's going to happen. But if you notice, that's like a poker player talking tough when he's already gone through his sack of decks when he's got his best friend dealing, and when he's got his brother-in-law in the back with a shotgun, so if the other guy gets a better hand, he'll blow his head off. They've called out all the troops, Dave Brown. They have called out all the troops. Because when the Fabulous Ones came here, they won the World Tag Team title, just like I said they were gonna do. They put Eddie Gilbert out and won the bounty, just like I said they were gonna do. Bill Dundee put him out, just 
like I said we were going to do. Jeff Jarrett couldn't deal with us. Jeff Jarrett couldn't stop us. Jerry Lawler couldn't deal with us. Jerry Lawler couldn't stop us. The reign of terror running rampant by the fabulous ones, the greatest tag team in the world. So what have they done now? Jerry Lawler and Jeff Jarrett getting together in that ring as a team. Bill Dundee, the guy that we hung a couple of weeks back, put him out of action to the hospital bed, coming back so supposedly to keep an eye on me. All the deck stacked against us, trying to take the world tag title away, because it's all on the line. The $100,000 bounty, Jerry Lawler and Jeff Jarrett, the world tag team title up for grabs, but they figured we need just one more little advantage. We need just one more little helping hand. So what do they do? Jerry Lawler gets on the phone. He calls the legend. He calls the hero. He calls the only living man older than Eddie Marlin, the fabulous Jackie Fargo. He says, come on down here, referee this thing. Set everything straight, and Jackie Fargo, who for years and years and years has always come out on top, always fought the right fight, always been the white knight in shining armor to rectify anything that went wrong. Jackie Fargo is coming down Monday night to referee that match to make sure nothing goes wrong. Well, I got news for you, Jackie Fargo. They've always said often imitated, but never duplicated. Well, after Monday night, brother, you're going to be mutilated because the fabulous ones are listening to me right now. Wait a minute. Back up, Jackie. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. minute. What would you just say? I said the back. Well, we're going to beat Fargo's brains out. No, 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 no. That's not anything to do with what we're doing, Jimmy Cornette. I agreed on Dundee. I agreed on Lawler. I agreed on Jeff Jarrett. I agreed on everybody up until this point. Not not Jackie Fargo. No, sir. No, sir. You better get something straight right now. I'll talk. Let's talk about it in the back. No, no, no. I draw the line, Jimmy Cornette, when it comes to Jackie Fargo. You didn't say anything about Jackie Fargo. You didn't say nothing about Jackie Fargo. I'm going to tell you something, Jimmy. I'm going to tell you this one thing. I'm going to make this short and sweet, Jimmy. When it comes to Jackie Fargo, you just better lighten up a little bit. Come on, you got to talk to Steve. Okay, wait a minute, just hold on a second. Stick your nose out of this. Steve, you didn't say anything about this before. I, I mean, you never said nothing about doing nothing, Jackie Fargo. I didn't think I had to. You never let me say nothing about you letting Jackie Fargo. We got the world tag team title on the line. We got $100,000 on the line. Steve, you it can't do that to me now. It don't matter. I do like anybody who told me to do like that when it comes to Jackie Fargo, there will be nobody putting his hands on him, Jimmy Cornette. Absolutely nobody touches Jackie Fargo. Steve, come on. Do something with me, take oh, no, but, wait, let's go, let's go in the back and talk about this. <laughs> let's go in the back. Hey, I I'm going to shut up, you more. I'm going to do better. I'm going to go back there. I'm going to get everything straightened out. I didn't say anything to Steve before because I didn't think I had to, but I'll tell you something, Fargo. You're an old caucus and an old stinking bag of bones. And one way or another, I'm going to make sure the fabulous ones win the world tag team title and the $100,000. If we got to go through Fargo to do it, that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to straighten everything out. I'll be back later on. Uh, you better go have a meeting right now. you got trouble. you got big trouble, it sounds like, because even your guys who have agreed to do everything you've told them to do, and who knows why, but even they have so much respect for Jackie Fargo, they say, uh-uh, ain't nobody touching him. We'll be back with more in just a moment. Travis together to go against the Eliminators Monday night at the Coliseum. But then the USWA World Tag Team titles will be on the line. Remember, neither team has the titles right now. They have been held up as a result of the action last week. So no one has the titles, but someone will after Monday night's action. The titles on the line, the fabulous one, Stan and Steve, with Jimmy Cornette, of course, in their corner, will be going against the King, Jerry Lawler, Jeff Jarrett and Bill Dundee will be in their corner, as Jerry has said, to keep an eye on Jimmy Cornette, but that's not all. The special announcement that the King made just a few moments ago, special referee for this match, the original fabulous one, the man who earned the title and bestowed it upon the team of Stan Lane and Steve Kern many years ago, or several years ago, not that many years ago, but uh, Jackie Fargo, of course, we're talking about. The legend will be here as the special referee in this match. And as Lawler said, he's heard about what Stan and Steve have been doing lately since they've hooked up with Cornette, and he's not at all happy about it. Even Stan and Steve demonstrated that they have so much respect for him that they told Cornette, don't try to harm Jackie Fargo. Should make for a most, most interesting, the most interesting, 
at the Mid-South Coliseum in quite some time. Make your plans to be there Monday night, 7.30. No increase in price. Regular prices, even though Fargo is coming in to be special referee. And it all happens Monday night at the Mid-South Coliseum. Ladies, thank you. We'll uh, be looking for you at the Coliseum. And we'll be back here with more USWA wrestling action in just a moment. Hey, the U.S. Males will be on the way here in just a moment. Uh, Chris Walker and Curtis Thompson. Looking forward to this match. Curtis Thompson was here before. Matter of fact, maybe we can stop him on the way uh, to the ring and talk to him just a minute about that. We were talking uh, before uh, we went on the air today. And uh, he said, here he is. He was out here with, uh, with uh, Robert Fuller a few weeks ago. And he, he was telling me that it only took one trip between... Memphis and Nashville on the interstate to find out he didn't want to be hooked up. I was just telling him you, you just only took you one trip on the expressway between uh, Memphis and Nashville to decide you didn't want to be hooked up with Robert Fuller anymore. Uh, let me just tell the people one thing and one thing only. You know, I'm not too big a man to admit when I'm a man's wrong and I was wrong. You know, I rode with Robert Fuller for a week and all he did is badmouth the Tennessee people and badmouth all these good looking women. He said there wasn't a good looking woman in Tennessee and he said all the fans were terrible and Hey, I was in Nashville. I had the best time, and I seen the best-looking women. Tennessee women, I'd say by far, are the best-looking women in town. And I'm going to be right here in the USWA, and I'll be looking at the women, and I'll be fighting for the fans. And not for Robert Fuller. That's yeah. a good move, and it's good of you to recognize that quickly. Chris, glad to have you uh, two teamed up here. Thank you very much. I'm really excited about being in the USWA. Curtis gave me a phone call and told me the best talent is here. I'm ready to take on some of this talent. You've obviously got some serious talent here. And Curtis and I are ready to take on the best talent you got to offer us, and we're ready to come out victory. All right, very good. Well, we got you booked in uh, some matches around the territory. Got one right here for you today, too. If you're ready, we'll just climb you, uh, climb up into the ring and uh, get this one going. Thank you very much. All right, Chris. Curtis. We appreciate it. All right, we good to have you here. Good luck to you in the match today. All right. That's Sergeant O'Reilly and Bill Rush up in the ring right now. The U.S. Males have teamed up. Curtis Thompson and Chris Walker. Fine looking team. We have seen that Curtis Thompson can in fact wrestle uh, when he was here before. Bill Rush and Sergeant O'Reilly waiting. Referee Scott Bowden checking them out. Making sure that uh, we haven't brought in illegal objects. And as soon as we get the signal from referee Scott Bowden, we will be underway with a one-fall, ten-minute time limit match here today. Good action so far. We also saw not so good action, too, as the fabulous ones, I think, felt they were in trouble against the new kids and ended up with a pile driver on Tony of the new kids. And let's see. Here we go. It looks like it's going to be Chris Walker starting against Sergeant O'Reilly as we are underway. USWA tag team action. Crowd likes that. Look at Chris Walker moving Sergeant O'Reilly around the ring. He grabs that left arm, puts a bar on it. O'Reilly's complaining. Hey, he pulled my hair. He pulled my tights. No, he didn't. There's a tag made, and Curtis Thompson will be coming in. Curtis Thompson snaps that arm a little bit. That'll do wonders for your shoulder. Off the ropes. Whoa, O'Reilly. Tried to block. He ended up getting shoved right down to the mat. Curtis Thompson. Nice move he put on him there. And he grabs O'Reilly, snaps him down to the mat. Ooh, power. Shows some upper body strength. Thompson with another slam. And O'Reilly looks up and finds himself staring in the face of his partner and he wisely made the tag here's bill rush bill rush is okay i'm ready look at this bill rush is going to be outweighed by about 40 pounds by both of these guys hey what rush when rush climbs in there he's confident of victory Good 
There it is, Thompson. Waste no time. Pick and rush up in the air. Crowd wants to throw him out of the ring. Yeah, we'll catch him, they say. Throw him out here. Nope. Just throws him into the ring. Bill Rush. Considerably less confident, I would say, than he was just maybe 30 seconds ago. We're coming up on the two-minute mark. Up in the air again, and again the crowd says, throw him out here. Well, you don't want to do that, Curtis. Because that, uh, that would be a technical loss over the top rope. He knows that, of course. He drops him back in the ring instead of throwing him out. Chris Walker up on the ropes. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. Flying press. One, two, three. This one's over. Yeah. Congratulations from one of the U.S. males to the other as they have just put together a victory here and a rather impressive one. Yeah, I was, Curtis was over for a kind word or two for Bill Rush. So even though it beat him, I, when he went over there, I thought, oh, my goodness, is he going to taunt this, uh, this poor kid? But uh, no, he didn't. He went over and he said, hey, maybe a better day is coming for you. Hang in there, kid, as Bill Rush rolls out of the ring, hanging onto his back. So the U.S. Mail is looking good in a victory here today. We'll be back with more after this. Well, we're just about set to go with our uh, next match here with uh, tag team action coming up. Matter of fact, six-man tag team action scheduled for you. USWA ring girls, I see you on the way. Oh, there is Uptown Bruno. Uptown Bruno, still decked out in that uh, better-looking suit and top hat. Allow me to introduce myself, Uptown Bruno, along with the brand-new Uptown Connection, baby. The best wrestlers in the entire world right here in the USWA with Uptown Bruno. In prime time, you've got your eye on that no-good U.S. male and his new partner, the other U.S. male, number two, Daddy. You know, first of all, Bruno, I think you need to go to get U.S. male and give him your glasses. Yeah. He's standing out here calling all these fat hogs, good-looking women, and he's just, the only thing I and you that's kind of male have in common is Robert Fuller. And he's talking about how him and Robert Fuller split up. Well, I slapped him in the mouth. U.S. male, this week when you face primetime Brian Lee, I'm taking you to school because it takes a lot more than a tan in bed and big biceps That's to it, get baby. in this business. And the greatest tag team in the entire world, Dave hey, Brown. Hey, Doug Gilbert and a dirty what white What about boy. Jerry Lynn? What about Cody Michaels? Boys, definitely you must have been drinking. You look at us. You look at yourself. Tell us, Tony. What's I said, going you know, Jerry Lynn and Cody Michaels, it's simple, boy. We're not just going to beat you one, two, three in the middle of the ring. What we're going to do is we're going to beat you up. I'm talking about maybe we'll pull a lie out of socket. Maybe we'll rip your head off. Maybe we'll break an arm or a leg. But the bottom line is, we're not just going to humiliate you by beating you. We are going to beat you up. And we're fixing to show you just how good we can beat somebody up, Dave Brown. Well, let's see. You've got a That's match. the bottom line, Dave. you got to understand, the U.S. Mail didn't walk away from Robert Fuller in downtown Bruno in the stable. Now it's uptown Bruno, you understand. I don't want any part of him. Because what he wanted was to be around these ugly, hairy-legged, goofy-looking girls. And we have a rule around here. Uptown Bruno, Robert Fuller, our whole crew. We don't want these ugly-looking, snaggletooth, goofy-looking women around us. And the bottom line is he wanted to hear the scream of the crowd. So if you don't mind, here. I've got a match here to commentate on right about now. As soon as the referee gives the signal, we will get uh, this six-man tag team match underway here but Dave if you'll allow Uptown Bruno to finish I was about to say that the ugly stupid looking women around here are all snaggle tooth their hair's all nappy they don't wash they never take a bath or a shower they got green teeth they're horrible and apparently this U.S. male and he went out and got him another U.S. male now they want to be around these ugly looking goofy people and these men out here they ought to be deloused it's horrible but if that's what they want if they want the roar of the crowd if they want those fans that's just fine we don't want any part of them and that's exactly what we told them stay away from us now then if they want to run their mouth they want to talk bad about uptown bruno and primetime brian lee they want to talk bad about the dirty white boy and doug gilbert that's just fine and robert fuller's listening somewhere too dave brown and the bottom line is they can say whatever they want to say they get in a ring with any of us they're going to pay the price because you don't come around in Uptown Bruno's backyard, the USWA, 
<laughs> and Do you your mind if I that. say something here? First of all, do, of let fact. me tell everybody who's wrestling here, for goodness sake. We didn't even get to do the introductions. Obviously, you know primetime Brian Lee, Tony Anthony, the dirty white boy, and dirty Gug Gilbert. Across the way, that's Freezer Thompson right there. Freezer has as his partners today, T.D. Steele, and a brand new face on USWA Wrestling, talking about Night Train Jackson. The three of them going against your team, Uptown Bruno, the Uptown Connection here today. Oh, my goodness. And that's Freezer Thompson just running in to the outstretched arm of primetime Brian Lee. Tag is made on Dirty Doug Gilbert. This is a six-man tag team match made in heaven, baby. I'm talking about the three greatest wrestlers of all time. Dirty Doug, Dirty White Boy, and primetime Dave Brown with Uptown Bruno, daddy. Dirty Doug just went over to the corner and took a swing at uh, T.D. Steele, who was standing out there. I don't know if I do that or not. Dirty Doug working on Freezer Thompson. These guys are tough. Make no mistake. They're mean. Once they get an opponent hurt, they go after him and they don't let up until they get a win. That's what Tony Anthony's trying to do right now. Oh, he Dave, would you instruct... Freezer Thompson had moved out of the way. Would I instruct who and what? Would you instruct these ugly-looking people that haven't had a bath since water was invented that I am not a weasel? They, uh, these fine fans that we are glad to have with us today may say anything they want to within reason, and weasel perhaps is in reason there, I think. You know, I heard somebody say, who called the announcer a jerk? And I looked at you and I said, who called that jerk an announcer? Watch it, Bruno. I'll start joining them in the chant there. This is Night Train Jackson in there. Our first look at him. Oh, down to the mat he goes. Look out, Tony Anthony. Drops down with the upper leg. They doubled up on him. Doug Gilbert had him tied up. Had the legs twisted so he couldn't move. Now, prime time, Brian Lee. Oh, my goodness. This may be it. Count of two, three. Yeah, kind of tough to get up after that. The match is over. But no, they keep going. Primetime Brian Lee, look at this, going after T.D. Steele now. He just kicked Freezer. Oh, he threw him over the top rope. Uh, the uptown connection, they're calling them. Running wild here. They got themselves a victory. The time out of 2 minutes, 39 seconds. Back with more after these messages. You're watching WMC TV5 Memphis. All right, we're going to try to get the King out here in just a minute and uh, make a special announcement she was talking about. First, let's check the action coming up around the territory. On uh, Friday, February 22nd, there will be championship wrestling in Batesville, Mississippi, 7.30 at South Panola High School. Pick up tickets in advance and save a dollar. The following night, Saturday the 23rd at Jonesboro, Arkansas, championship wrestling back at the Earl Bell Community Center on Church Street. The box office will be open that afternoon at 3 o'clock for advance ticket sales. Again, that's uh, on February 23rd in Jonesboro. And on Friday, March 1st, Ripley, Tennessee, as USWA Wrestling will be coming to town. Here's the king and some special guests. Jerry, this, uh, let me let you uh, introduce them there. Well, I'll let the, the introduce yourself. This is Otis. Go ahead, Otis. Otis Pettis. Otis Thanks. Pettis and Pat Weiler. Now, these guys are from, without a doubt, probably the greatest sports store in Memphis. I mean, if you're, gonna, if you're looking for any type of sports, you guys have it all out there, don't you? I mean, anything connected with sports. It's a Sports Unlimited, as you can see, 6777 Winchester. Now, somebody, where, whereabouts is that? Is that like out near that Malco uh, uh, Winchester? Winchester Park Street, you know, from uh, Michael, Michael uh, Central Church. Uh, okay. Right, exactly. Okay, that's the easy way to know where it is. But anyway, uh, this afternoon, I'm going to be out there from 2 until 4 p.m. That's just uh, a couple hours away now. 2 until 4 p.m. this afternoon, and uh, we are going to have free pictures for everybody. All kind of stuff going on this afternoon yeah, there, right? Tickets. And we're going to have exactly what they said, a whole bunch. I'm not going to tell you how many, but a whole bunch of free tickets. Tickets to this coming Monday Night's Wrestling. So uh, all you got to do is come on out there. We'll sign you some autographs, give you free pictures and show you the greatest sports store in all of Memphis at Sports Unlimited today from 2 to 4. Everybody that's watching, come on out there and see us, okay? Okay, thank you, Jerry. Yes, indeed. Thank you guys for uh, coming by here today, too. And uh, good luck this afternoon. Jerry said, of course, he will be there from 2 to 4 today. Well, I see right here that uh, there's a brand new tag team around. Maybe we can stop them on the way to the ring. They've got a match coming up uh, right now. The Eliminators I'm talking about. And as they come out here... Maybe we can uh, stop them on the way and talk to them. Uh, well, I don't see them so far, as a matter of fact. But 
Me, yeah. Okay. Here they come on the way right here. I don't know if we want to talk to them or not. Ooh. Maybe this wasn't such a good idea after all. Here they are. Hey. Get the microphone, Mr. Down microphone here. man. <laughs> hey, how you doing, huh? I'm ready to uh, eliminate you. We're to eliminate some people today. We're bad guys. Uh, we beat people up. We love it. We love it. You punks in the back, make some calls, get booked in another territory, because we're here and we're going to eliminate you, punks. The Eliminators. Well, they got a match right here today, boy. I tell you what, they look like uh, a team that uh, they're not going to want to deal with too much, but they're going to have to be dealt with. Look at this. Grabbing uh, Keith Eric. Even before the bell sounds, a, a great big old logging chain here. Looks like a huge chain that this guy has brought in here. Now the other one grabs Keith down on the floor. They've got to, their opponents. As the bell sounded, they were throwing them out of the ring. Keith, Eric, and Chris Frazier never had a chance to get going against this team. Our first look at the Eliminators. Boy, we saw that they were booked on cards around the area. And... We're usually glad to uh, introduce new faces on USWA Championship Wrestling on TV. And I tell you what, what an introduction from these guys. This is trouble. One of the eliminators wears a mask, the other one doesn't. Oh, look at this. They hang Chris Frazier upside down on the ropes, and he goes after Keith Eric, who's just minding his own business back in the corner where he's supposed to be. This group making no bones about it. They say they're in here to eliminate people, get them out of the territory. They're off to quite a start as they jump their opponents. There's Chris Frazier, kicked down to the floor again. Keith Eric, Keith Eric yelling something at him. I, I think what he was saying is, hey, stay back. I'm going to help him up here. Well, he does help Chris back into the ring. I think Chris wants to be in the ring right now. You've got to admire him for climbing back in there after the beating these guys have put on him. Chris fired into the rope. Big old clothesline, nails him. There he is, down on the mat. The Eliminator picks him up, calls for a boot from his partner, and there it is in the corner. And Chris Frazier's head is run right into it. The Eliminators, you're watching in action right here. Now the one under the mask drops down on Chris Frazier. Doesn't go for a three count, though. Instead, he picks him up. Runs him into the boot of his partner across in the corner. And he, he, he turns and goes after Keith Eric again. Once again, Keith has just been standing there. It's been hazardous to do what you're supposed to do and stand in the corner and wait for a tag today with these guys going after anything that moves. Continue to work on Chris Frazier. Around behind him, one is holding him up. The other one climbing the rope. He's on the middle rope. Oh, yeah. Boy, I tell you what, they don't even mind double teaming. Count of two, this one's over. There's a three count by referee Scott Bowden. And this one is history. The Eliminators have done one thing here today. They have served notice that they are indeed a very, very big factor to deal with in the USWA. Back with more action for you in a moment. Once again, USWA Ring Girls joining us uh, once again as we uh, take a look at the action that will be coming up at the Mid-South Coliseum, 7.30 Monday night. The USWA World Tag Team titles will be on the line. Special referee Jackie Fargo as the fabulous one, Steve Kern and Stan Lane with Jimmy Cornett, their manager, will be going against Jerry Lawler, Jeff Jarrett, and they'll have Bill Dundee. I think we have... Hey, if you have something to no. say, say it. You're not running this show. Get out of the way. What, Get what do you want to say? Go, leave. Hit, slam, bamoose. You're trying to distract my men. Get out of the way. I'm not going to do nothing until they leave. Uh, 
I ain't going to do nothing until they leave. So we can get rid of him, if, if you don't mind. Thank you. See you at, uh, at the Coliseum there. All right. Okay. They don't want to hear what you have to say anyway. None of us do. I don't want to look at them. I don't want to look at them. Now, I've got something to say about Monday night's match. I think we've got everything straightened out. I want to bring Stan and Steve on out here. Come on, guys. Back up. Get a good shot of Stan and Steve, the fabulous ones coming in here. Stan. How did the meeting go, Jimmy? That's what we want to know. I to Stan. We've been together a long time, Stan. If you had a time to talk to him, you've got all that time back there. I told you what to say, what to do, and everything, what to promise him. Now, how have you done? Jimmy. Tell us what's going on. Did I hear money mentioned? Jimmy, I've talked to Steve. We went outside for a second. Uh, tell you the truth, I'm not really wild about jumping on Jackie Fargo either. But you know how Steve is. He's strong-willed, and uh, I didn't have too much leadway with him, tell you the truth. Hey, I told you what, Steve, Steve, come on, come on, be, 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 be nice, remember the title, the hundred thousand dollars, the whole thing, everything's going to be okay, just listen to me, Steve, I promise you, everything will be all right. Okay, first of all, Jimmy Cornette, to this point right now, I can't complain about anything you've done, you've told me to take out Lawler, you've told me to take out Jeff Jarrett, you've told me to take out Dundee, you've told me to take out a few referees. Well, I don't mind doing any of that. As a matter of fact, I'm really enjoying that. See, there you and, go. See, and, and I'm going to do my fine, best. Fine. I'm going to do my best to either break Jerry Lawler's neck there we or go. send him on down the road to some other area, but to collect the money from Terry <laughs> Funk, because I got a lot of respect for Terry Funk. But, but, I had to get some air after I talked to you earlier in this show, so I went outside. And when I was outside, Jimmy Cornette, a little boy about this high come up to me, and he said, Steve Kern, I've watched you since you've become a fabulous one, and he says, the only thing I'm asking you, Mr. Kern, is please don't hurt Jackie Fargo. Oh. Okay, well, you can well, take it off. I can listen to a little stinking rug rat slimy, no snot running down. Oh, wait a minute. Hey, shut up. He ain't gonna hit me. He ain't gonna hit me. Steve, come on, you're gonna listen to a kid. Oh, wait a minute. All that kid asked me was not to hurt Jackie Fargo. He didn't say nothing about Jerry Law or anybody else. And I'm going to tell you this, Jimmy Cornette, that brought back a lot of memories of a lot of kids I hugged. But I'm going to tell you something. When that kid asked me, please don't hurt Jackie Fargo, I made a promise outside. And I'm going to promise every kid in this audience, every person in this audience, and every person watching this television right now, come Monday night, Jimmy Cornette, I will be working for you, but nobody will touch Jackie Fargo. You can't do nothing with him. You've known him for nine years. Jesus Christ. I told you I tried, Jimmy. Oh, Stan, what are we going to do? Hey, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you people something. I'm going to make a promise right here. And that promise is the fabulous ones are good enough to beat Jerry Lawler and Jeff Jarrett. I don't care whether Fargo's a referee or not. They can beat them. They can be the world tag team champions, and they can take that bounty. But I guarantee you, I'm going to have a little plan. I'm going to have something in the back of my mind, because Monday night, I ain't leaving nothing a chance. We're going to be the champions. We're going to take that bounty. And Jackie Fargo, maybe you and me ain't going to see eye to eye, but one thing's for sure. We are going to walk out of that ring, leaving Jeff Jarrett and Jerry Lawler laying face down. Jackie Fargo or no. You heard what Steve Kern had to say, and Stan Lane back Steve Kern up on it. Nobody, but nobody touches Jackie Fargo as he referees that match, no matter what Cornette says. Back in a moment. Expiration of time match coming up right here, but before we get the match underway, Tom Pritchard and Terry Garvin asked for a, for a moment of conversation, and I guess we'll grant that. Here comes down to, uh, up, Uptown Bruno leading the way here. Uptown Bruno with a new look. What's in the what's in the sack? That's none of your business, Dave. I just want to make one statement. I've got a reputation for years worldwide of being associated with nothing but winners. Everybody knows Mr. Terry Garvin is a winner, and he will continue to be a winner. Now the latest winner with the Uptown Connection right here, baby. I would like to introduce to you and all these unbathed rednecks out here, Dr. Tom Pritchard. Welcome to the... First of all, I want to make it very clear so nobody misinterprets or misunderstands what I'm feeling and what I'm trying to say. I do not like being in Memphis, Tennessee. I do not like being here in anywhere in Tennessee. But you see, when it comes right down to it, you got a couple of guys running around here, and one wants to call himself the king. You 
are no longer the king. Terry Funk is the king. <laughs> and then you got a guy who wants to walk around calling himself a superstar. And then you got a guy walking around that wants to call himself the Southern heavyweight champion who's signing for tag team matches and won't even put the belt on the line. <laughs> well, I got to tell you something, man. I didn't come to Memphis to be in the first match. I didn't come to Memphis to jerk any curtains. I came to Memphis to show you and everybody else that Jeff Jarrett, they may call you champ for short, but not for long when I step in the ring. And if you got any guts, show these people around Tennessee and the U.S. WA exactly what you're made of and sign against a real outlaw, man. Tom Pritchard. Tom, everything Tom Pritchard said, I back up 110%. He's a friend of mine, and we've been friends for a long time. Now listen to me, Jerry Lawler. You embarrassed me out here last week in this ring. You embarrassed me bad. You tried to cut my beautiful hair. Well, I tell you what, nobody touches my hair, Jerry Lawler. And as of right now, today, I'm going to let it be known that for 11 years, I've cut hair. <laughs> I got my nickname, The Beauty, because I made stars like Marie Osmond and John Snyder and all those people look good. <laughs> So, I can cut hair. And starting today, Tommy Pritchard, I'm going to start cutting some hair. What's in the bag is everything I need to cut hair right here today. And I'm going to start right in this ring. Danny, Danny Davis. You know, some people get their blonde hair from their mother's side. Some people get it from their father's side. But you get it from Peroxide, side, and you're going down. The doctor is going to make a house call, and the beauty is setting up shop. Let's get him. Huh? You got a match right here. Bruno, if you'll take him to the ring, we will get this uh, tag team match going. Danny Davis in there right now with his partner, Jerry Lynn. And here we go. What is this? Pritchard and Garvin, I think a little disagreement over who was starting the match. Finally, Garvin says, all right, you want to, go ahead. The doctor, he calls himself, Tom Pritchard. The doctor, the beauty, and up Tom Bruno. Could you be around anybody better looking or more successful than us? I doubt it. Short answer, yes. Hey, hey, hey. Danny Davis. He's got an arm in a hammer position. Tom Pritchard has got a foot back on the rope, as you can see there. The referee calls for a count, as he should. Danny Davis broke the holes. Ah, oh, look at this. Pritchard forcing him back into the corner. Terry Garvin grabs him from behind. Nice move by Davis. He knew he was about to get doubled up, and he immediately went into a flurry of activity and able to get, escape and get back over to his corner. He made the tag on Jerry Lynn, his partner. Jerry Lynn reverses Terry Garvin into the rope. Off the rope there. Garvin bouncing off the mat. Jerry Lynn, nice drop kick. Jerry Garvin hits the mat on his knee. Oh! He was claiming to be hurt, and Tom Pritchard sneaks in behind Jerry Lynn and nails him. Oh, my goodness! What a move by Jerry Lynn! Danny Davis comes in and goes to work. He grabs Garvin. Fires him into the rope. Upper arm coming off of there. The nightmare, Danny Davis, looking good. Oh, he snaps that neck. There's a count of one, two. Pritchard jumps on him at the two count. Bruno was spraying something on a towel. What's he doing? He's in the ring spraying something on a towel and flips it over Danny Davis's nose. What is that, ether probably? And a referee is going to, it's going to be technical loss, of course, on Bruno as he, uh, Goes into the ring there, but meanwhile, he's got that towel. He was spraying something in that towel, and Danny Davis is having a tough time getting back on his feet. He's still, still out of it. And Bruno doing the same thing now to Jerry Lynn. Meanwhile, Pritchard, oh, I can smell it. It's definitely ether. Oh, 
it. Look how they put Danny Davis in a chair. Pritchard holding him up. Come on. Garvin with the shears about to go to work on Danny Davis's head. But Lawler, Curtis Thompson, and Brian of the new kids all come in, and that stops that right there. So the haircut, thank goodness, does not take place. The victory of the match is going to go to Danny Davis and Jerry Lynn as they get to win in about uh, two minutes, five seconds. And they're going to help both, have to help both of them out of the ring. That's definitely either way. You can smell it all the way over here. Let's take a break. We'll be back uh, to wrap things up here in just a moment. Main event of the night. The fabulous one, Stan Lane, Steve Kern, with Jimmy Cornette in their corner, will be going against the king, Jerry Lawler, his partner, Jeff Jarrett, and in their corner, superstar Bill Dundee to keep an eye on Jimmy Cornette. In this one, the USWA World Tag Team titles are on the line. They've been held up. The winners of that match will be the World Tag Team Champions. And as you may have seen right there, or certainly have heard earlier today, as Jerry Lawler announced earlier, there is a special referee for the match, none other than the original Fabulous One, the man who earned the name Jackie